of course my <clears throat> fever breaks as soon as i put on my freaking skincare hi everybody here's what's up for today so i'm not feeling well i really don't want to be filming myself today this is not going to be fun to edit but i am doing crafty stuff today so welcome if you're new here hi i'm laura this is last minute laura show when you come here you can usually find me making something or doing something crafty I'm gonna do another couple of day long vlog uh, because I've got stuff to do. I'm gonna show you what I've been up to already because my stove has been going. I still have to clean up the kitchen. Um, and then we're gonna do some fun stuff today. So subscribe, like the video, and let's jump into today. So here's where we're starting with. I actually began this yesterday. I scoured two skeins of wool. I did one Briggs and Little Regal Wool and Washed White, and I did one Knit Picks uh, Merino style wool in white. And these, I scoured them yesterday. I also pre-mordanted them in iron mordant solution. I'm gonna make another one this vlog so I can show you how to make your iron mordant solution to prep your fabric like this. I also, uh, scoured and pre-mordanted a baby blanket. Anyway, this is just 100% cotton. I did the exact same process, scouring and pre-mordanting. And this is now damp. I've rinsed it out. I'm just leaving it on the lid to keep it warm because I don't want it to dry out all the way. The yarn is pre-mordanted, but we don't have a dye bath yet. And then still in the dye pot, I have a white cotton shirt that is currently in the process of pre-mordanting. I already scoured it. I'm pre-mordanting that in iron as well. And then I have some old cotton double gauze. So that's like baby receiving blankets that I previously dyed in grapes. Today I'm gonna do some eco printing on these. So I've done eco printing before on this channel. This is the result of that. Basically it's the process of hammering flowers onto fabric that has been pre-treated. So this is from last August or the August prior, um, but you can see the patterns are super permanent. This has been washed and turned into a little pair of shorts. Unfortunately, I sewed it in a size extra small, so these are not going to fit me. They're still cute. And you can see how cute the prints are. This was a fabric that was dyed with walnut husks and then re mordanted with iron so that the flowers would stick. And you can see the cosmos make for such a beautiful purple flower. And then look at this bright yellow from the marigolds. There's another marigold. There's a marigold leaf. There's a different marigold. I love it. It's like a little beetle, but it's just a marigold petal. So we're gonna do that today on some fabric. I'm gonna do that on this baby blanket for my sister's baby. And then the yarn, I think that I wanna do another marigold dye bath, but since this has been pre-mordanted with iron, I'm expecting a dark green um, when we do that marigold dye bath. What else could we do? I'm gonna clean up the kitchen. Maybe we'll dry some herbs, just some handmade stuff. So if that sounds cool, let's do it, okay? Uh, but first things first, it's pretty much just waiting for that to finish mordanting. And then I think that we can, maybe we can go outside now and pick some of the flowers for the, for the hammering and find the hammer. Okay, so eco printing is a bit of a loud sport uh, because you're hammering onto a hard surface. So I've got some, these are actually my blocking mats, but I'm gonna use them to sit on because we're gonna do this outside. Got my hammer. I've also got some onion skins which we might use today. And I've got a bouquet of flowers that I used, um, used, <laughs> that I picked yesterday. So I'm gonna use some of these darker flowers to do some prints. Cool. All right, so I thought we would start with some of the things I've already picked. I've got a little board of wood just to sort of dampen the sound of the hammering. Then I'm gonna put my fabric down on the wood, flatten it really well. And then I'm gonna take some flowers that I know do really well uh, just to start me off, because these are just so pretty. So let's do a marigold first. Marigolds are a little bit too fat to hammer. Uh, if you just hammer them as is, you'll kind of end up with a, a messy blob. But if you pull the petals off and just arrange them in a flower, like in a circle, it'll look like a flower, but it'll be a lot neater. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this plastic bag over top of the, uh, the petals to flatten them out. And then I'm gonna put this towel on top of that. And then I'm gonna just hammer this all the way through, all the way around. You don't need that towel. You could do it just with your plastic bag. And then these can just peel off. 
and bada bing bada boom look at that print oh it's so cute look at this isn't that pretty i hope you can see it i'm gonna do a whole bunch more now I'm basically just gonna decorate this uh this blanket here with a bunch of different stamped flowers how much those change color in just a few minutes. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm gonna just keep hammering at these. So I've done a whole lot of flowers on this thing now. Isn't that pretty? I hope you can see it. Uh, but now I'm gonna do the same thing to a shirt that I have uh, pre-mordanted for myself. So now I'm just going to take some onion skins that I have here. I'm going to just drop them on here in a cute way, package it up, and then I'm gonna steam it. That's the plan. I think I will tie this up with some string. And then I'm gonna put it on top of the mordanting pot, not in it, just enough for it to get steamed. I'm gonna do that now. Check on the other stuff at the same time. All right, so it's about half an hour later now. Uh, I've just taken my shirt out of the steaming pot and I'm just gonna shake it outside and uh, see what it looks like. <laughs> Does it look amazing? Can you even tell? Do you see all of the colors now? I'm gonna go hang this outside or just right here, I guess, to dry. Oh, that looks cool. Very, very cool. All right, and now I think we should go collect some marigolds in the garden to do a dye bath, I think. in some onion skins into that dye bath. So it's gonna be marigolds and onion skins mixed together. I'm gonna do about a 50-50 mix. All right, the pot is about half filled with water now. I'm gonna put it on the stove. I'm gonna turn the heat on to a medium because this is not even simmering yet. And I think I'm going to put one of the skeins of yarn in just right on top of all of the onions and marigolds. Let me show you up close. Right, I'm just going to put this skein right on top of it like that. Then I'm gonna put the lid on. And as soon as this comes up to a simmer, I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and let it simmer for one hour. And then we're gonna be done with that first skein. While we wait for the dye bath to come up to a simmer, um, I'm also going to make more iron mordant and then I'm gonna clean up the kitchen. So for iron mordant, you need some rusty items. Let's say, one cup of rusty items. I'm gonna go outside and get a handful of rusty nails that are in my backyard because that is something I have. If you can't find any rusty items around your home and you live in a city, I would say go downtown, walk around the main area of downtown and just sort of look on the edges of the road where the road meets the sidewalk. There's usually like nuts and bolts there. Sometimes you'll find like a car part or a bicycle part, be really careful. Make sure you are not gonna get cut by the rust because tetanus and lockjaw and all those things. Um, maybe don't do what I say at all, but you need rusty items for this. So be really careful. I'm gonna be moderately careful and I'm gonna collect some rusty things and then I'll come back and show you what you gotta do next. All right, I got my rusty things here and I'm gonna add in some vinegar about one part vinegar and then three parts water. So the rest of this jar, I'm just gonna fill up with water. And now I'm going to put a lid on this, but before I get the lid on it, I'm gonna put saran wrap over the glass jar first. And that's just because if I leave the, uh, the rim exposed, then the vinegar and the rust will affect the actual lid of the jar. And now I'm just gonna put this little dude into a cool dark place for a couple of weeks. And I'll show you what it looks like after a couple of weeks. So this is my old iron mordant. That's why I needed to make a new one. Uh, you can see this jar has been through it, has a lot of rust residue. And you can see the liquid is now opaque. It's because all of the rust particles are suspended in that vinegar water solution. This jar is pretty much done for. So I'm going to, honestly, I'll probably just add more rusty items to this jar and do the exact same thing. I guess I could have just done that. Now I'll have two jars of iron mordant, it's fine. Oh, but by the way, this is a great place to put this in if you, 
are doing something like this if you're doing natural dye stuff. Use separate pots for the natural dye. Use separate jars that are labeled exclusively for natural dye stuff because although it's not, uh, it's not gonna kill you. This is still poison. So be careful and don't use food things for your natural dye stuff. And don't use natural dye stuff for your food things. All right. Good talk. Good job making a mordant. The mordant is the fixer for the dye, by the way. It makes it permanent, or at least it makes it as permanent as it can do. Okay, so I'm gonna let the dye pot sit for a little while and I'm gonna clean up the kitchen now. Yay. So kitchen's clean. Yay. Uh, it's not been an hour yet. It's only been about 20 minutes, but look at this dye pot. You're gonna die. Look how dark this yarn has gotten already. It's just been sitting atop the dye stuff and it is like, dark, dark army green, almost black. Can you see that? See how dark that is? That's wild. So I've turned the heat down to low and I'm gonna leave that covered on low for the rest of the hour and then we can rinse it out. All right, one hour has now elapsed. Let's take that yarn out. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Ugh. Great. All right, so that's in the sink. And now, right away, I'm gonna just grab this second skein of yarn that I've had sitting in water just so that it's soaked all the way still. I'm gonna put this into the dye pot now. And hopefully we'll get something else beautiful there. Cover that one up and we'll put that one on for another hour. Uh, leave that on low for an hour, I should say. Now come over here and look at this. Look how dark that is. It's like really dark. That's cool. All right, so I'm gonna just put hot, hot water on it to rinse it off, because it's already, it's hot right now. Taking on some nice color in here as well. This one's looking more of like a green. The other one's looking like a really dark brown. Beautiful though. This one's very foresty looking. I am happy about that. Okay, so it's later now. <clears throat> Alex just left and tomorrow it's his birthday. Um, so I'm going to make a cake. He's, he's still like leaving, that's why I'm being quiet. But anyway, I'm gonna make him a cake. I've already taken out my mixing bowl. Um, my this thing is called the mm -hmm. I've got three eggs and I'm gonna go get my cake mix. Um, we're gonna bake this cake as soon as possible so that the house doesn't smell like cake when he comes home. That way I can make it a surprise because since we both have COVID, we can't go out and do anything for his birthday tomorrow, but I still want to uh, make him feel special. So I'm gonna bake a cake. Let's do it. Ta -da. <clears throat> All right, so it says uh, for a shiny metal or glass pan, 325 um, for a dark, hold on, 350 for shiny metal, 325 for dark nonstick. I'm doing dark nonstick. Mix cake mix, water, oil, and eggs in a large bowl with a mixer on medium speed. Pour in pan, bake for 28 to 33 minutes. That seems pretty. Easy peasy. So I already preheated the oven before Alex even left. So the oven is now ready. I'm gonna put these two cakes into my oven at 350. I'm gonna back it down to 325 now, but the air that comes out of the oven should account for that. Okay, so that's gonna bake now for 28 to 33 minutes. So I'm just gonna put a timer on for 25 minutes and we'll see how it looks in 25 minutes. And then we can wash out that yarn, I think. But I'm gonna do the dishes for all the cake stuff so that there's no evidence when Alex comes home. What else do I have to do? Well, that's it for now, so see you next time. Okay, all cleaned up. Uh, there's still 15 minutes left on those cakes, but I do want to make a special icing for the cake. So I froze this dairy milk, it's just a chocolate bar, and then I have a cheese grater, and I'm going to grate a bunch of the chocolate in. So I'm going to put the icing 
into this bowl or some of it, maybe, oh, I have an idea actually. We'll put some of it into this bowl with the chocolate and then we'll put some of it into another bowl and add some food coloring, I think. And then we'll do some kind of icing magic on the final cake, but I'm gonna mix this in. Chocolate chunk buttercream. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge for now and let's mix up another color. Is this a bad idea? How am I going to get this done before Alex gets home? Okay, I say we do some copper. I have two of the same set. I use one of my food coloring sets for dye and one of my food coloring sets for food. So just so you know, this was from the food one, but I do love the copper color. Check back into some of my other videos to see me use this same type of food coloring on yarn. Okay, let's call that it for the copper. Okay, so I'm gonna take my red, no taste red food dye, and we're gonna make some of the icing, whatever's left in that container, we'll make that red. And we'll figure out how we're gonna make this work later. Okay, the timer for the oven just went off. Let's see. Ooh, they're perfect. Okay, so I have to stab it with a knife. And if the knife comes out clean, it's done. I'm really not a baker, like I'm not exaggerating with you. This is high success. Can you see it? Yes, you can, they're beautiful. Comes out clean, that means it's done. Okay, so let's get this out of here. Alex will be so impressed. My sisters are both bakers. My mom is a baker. I have never ever needed to be a baker, so I never became one. Oh, but they're perfect. Okay, so we'll let them cool, and then we'll take them out and let them cool all the way, get them in the fridge, cooled all the way down, and hopefully iced before Alex gets home. Oh my goodness. Like I said, my mom bakes, my sisters both bake. I've never needed to. I feel this was empowering. I do feel I feel pretty cool that I baked two cakes and watching my mom make a million and one cakes, I know that in a few minutes after these cool down to the touch, I'll be able to take them out of the pans and then put them in the fridge or freezer until they're all the way cool. And that should speed everything up so then I can ice the cakes. Like my mom used to put them in the fridge and then she'd ice them later. Maybe I'm gonna be speeding it up a little bit, but I think it's gonna work out. I think it's gonna be okay. We just don't wanna be, be putting icing on hot cake or else the icing will melt because it's like butter based. So it'll just sort of ugh, ooze off. We want the cakes completely all the way cooled down. Oh my gosh, they are perfect. Ah! Okay, so there is a second part to this, um, this whole razzle dazzle secret cake making I'm doing. Um, and that is Alex can't figure it out. So I have to cover up the smell of the cake with something. So while these cakes are cooling down, I am going to get started on something for dinner that is going to smell really tasty, but not like cake. So I'm just going to see how the cakes are. I'm gonna loosen them up a bit. And I have piled up some peppers. I'm gonna cook them. They're the last of, I don't know, the last harvest we did. They're the last few peppers. I know they're not great looking, but they're still good. I mean, I picked them, so I know they're still good. They're just a little bit uh, wilty, but they'll be fine. I'm gonna do them in a stir fry. It's gonna work. It's totally gonna work. It's gonna... Oh God, okay, hold on. Good, it came out. Cake number one is actually freaking perfect. All right, here we go. Cake number two, also perfect. No sticking. All right, so now actually maybe I'll put this. Gosh, I'm holding this careful. Hold on, Laura. I'm gonna put this one into the freezer and then I'll put this one into the fridge because there's not enough room in the freezer for two cakes. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, let's do peppers. Oh, I can actually oven roast them. The oven was just on. Perfect. Favorite knife. Okay, so peppers and onions get really sweet when you roast them in the oven. And I'm wondering, because they also release a whole bunch of juice, right? I'm wondering if they release a bunch of their juice, if the blueberries could kind of partially rehydrate with the pepper juice and just add another complex element to the sweetness. Too much or just enough? 
I'm gonna put that in the oven now. All right, there we go. And there's still 20 minutes left on the timer for the peppers. I'm gonna just throw these. Actually, I'm not gonna put them in yet. I'm gonna take the yarn out first and we're gonna rinse out this yarn now. Yes. Oh, that's a nice color. Very dark army green. Beautiful. I'm just gonna let it drip for a sec and then I'm gonna take it over to the sink. I'm gonna rinse it with some hot water. Now I'm gonna put those onion skins into the dye bath and I'm going to grab the shirt outside, the white cotton button up shirt that has been mordanted and I am going to put that into the dye bath now. And I'll turn the heat up just to warm that back up. Wow, that's a pretty color. It's like army green, but it's not only army green. There's so many things mixed in. It's got like this beautiful tan. There's brown I can see. It's like a mossy green. And then there's some really dark, dark browns. I hope this is as magical once it dries. I'm gonna go hang this one outside as well now. Can you even see any of the colors? I hope so. It's so pretty. And I am going to also add another handful of the onion skins on top of the shirt. And we'll just see what happens there. And now I'm gonna open the oven and check on those peppers. It smells good now. Okay, so while the peppers need a little bit more time, the cakes are ready to be iced, I hope. They look ready, they feel ready. It seems like it's a good vibe. They're cooled down all the way. There's no warmth coming from them, so that's good. Um, I just washed my hands. Okay, so first I'm going to do, what am I going to do first? Yeah, this will be the in-between, um, in-between the two, cakes icing. Just like, and go around it, you know? I'm actually a genius. I bought backup icing just in case, and it looks like there is not enough icing, so that was lucky. So I'm just gonna Okay, so I'm just gonna put this in the fridge to cool down for a sec. T-shirt's looking cool. Let's see how the peppers are looking. So my mom made us stew because we're sick and I forgot until just now. Uh, so this is like beef and vegetable stew um, and I am going to add this to the peppers because then it'll just have more peppers in it, which is good. Okay, so <clears throat> Alex just let me know if he's getting ready to so, so it came out pink, which was not the intended color, but that's okay. We'll figure that out tomorrow because it's not a today job anymore. Alex is almost home. I've smoothed it out as best I can, and this will firm up a little more and I'll be able to smooth it out underneath the saran wrap. Alex is gonna be home any second. <clears throat> and I made some stewed peppers. Alex's has homemade hot sauce, chunky, and then sriracha. I put Havarti on top of it, but it's just a stew. 
Those blueberries did rehydrate, see? Mm. I wonder if they'll add anything fun. Anyway, that's supper. Also, the shirt is looking great. Brownish green happening. Got a little bit too hot there. I just turned the heat back down. And I think actually that's probably good for that for tonight. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and we're just gonna let that sit overnight and then we'll wash that out in the morning. But dinner first. Alrighty. Hello. It's the next day now. Hi. It's Alex's birthday today. And look, the cake. We had some this morning on stream. Uh, join us, by the way. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 a.m. until noon. And uh, we had a little bit of cake and we sang happy birthday to Alex today. So here's what the cake turned out like. Those are some dehydrated blueberries and shaved chocolate. And there's the inside. Ta-da! And then I surrounded it with some nasturtiums from the garden just to make it prettier. But now that it's the next morning, it's time to wash out the shirt that I dyed yesterday. I'm not going to pour out the dye bath because we still have another thing to dye today. Um, but I am gonna pull the shirt out and we're gonna wash it out to see the final color. Ooh, this is a good color. So the dye bath, I am going to leave it. I'm gonna put it back on the stove actually and get it heated up. And then we're gonna put some more stuff into it. Are you done dripping? All right, the water is coming out more or less clear now. And you can see the really beautiful color. It's like an army green, splotchy, but still pretty consistent considering this is like cotton. I don't usually get a very consistent dye on cotton. I think it looks great. So I'm gonna grab a hanger and then we're gonna hang that outside to dry. There we go. So now that that shirt is outside drying, I wanna put this shirt, which currently it's just a, a shape with a hole in the middle, but eventually we will sew up the sleeves and sew up the side seams and it'll be a long sleeve shirt. So this was dyed with blue Concord grapes and then we re-premordanted it with iron. So now it's like this beige gray. I really like the color, but we're about to change the color. So this is starting to warm up. This is not wet, but I'm not super worried. So I'm just gonna put that in and I'm gonna grab another handful of the onion skins and just crinkle those bad boys on top. Then I'm gonna put the lid on. And I'm gonna leave that for an hour. I'll turn the heat from, it's on high right now, it's not gonna simmer or anything, but I'll turn the heat down to low as soon as it gets hot. And then we'll leave it on for an hour. And while we're waiting for that, I'll figure out the next thing we have to do today. All right, it's been <clears throat> about an hour. I went outside and look what I just brought in from the garden. So I forgot that I had put this outside for the summer. And while I was just cleaning up some of the stuff in the garden, I found this and this plant was so close to dying. And now it has all these new leaves and they're so, it looks awesome. So I just bare root transplanted it. So I took it out of the soil outside, washed all the dirt off the roots and the leaves, gave it a really good bath and then repotted it in some potting mix. And let's check on the shirt. Nice getting the color not dark enough for me just yet but I think I am going to put in a handful more onion skins I'll show you what the color is right now and you can see what you think here's what the color of the fabric looks like right now hopefully you can kind of see the color <laughs> with this terrible backlighting um, I'll try and get an overhead shot can you see it now Anyway, I'm gonna leave that on low heat still, uh, I think for another hour, but first, a little bit more onion skin. I'm gonna go see if there's any more marigolds outside too. Lucky me, I found some more marigolds. Look at how pretty this one is. Isn't that stunning? This is what they always look like, or the one, this variety, but in the fall, they start to uh, put out weird ones. So they start getting like petals like this. Look, it's like a weird one, but all summer they look like this. So pretty. Drop those right on top. Actually, I'm also going to put in these two pieces of cotton now. All right, so the timer just 
just went off. Oh, that's looking good. Come look at this. The back color. Look how dark that got. Beautiful. And now we can take this fabric out of here and then rinse it. This looks awesome. <laughs> look at this color. Wow. From onions and marigolds. I love natural dye. Okay, I'm gonna rinse this out a couple more times until it's clear, and then I'm gonna go hang it over my um, railing in the backyard to dry. And I'm gonna bring in the other shirt that's dry now. So here's how that other shirt looks right now. Dry. It's kind of like a dark gold, I wanna say. It's really pretty. I'm so happy with it. I'm working on a shirt for Alex. So in the end, going to have flower pounding, embroidery, maybe fabric paint, and possibly bleach. This will be a custom shirt by the time I'm done with it. But it's dry now, so round one, dyeing it, is done. Ready for how crunchy this is? This is a dried fruit salad. So I've got apple chips. I picked the apples from my parents' farm. I've got dried blueberries in here. I picked them in Nova Scotia a couple of weeks ago. Mm, they're so good. They're like crunchy, but chewy. And then I have ground cherries that I picked at my parents' farm as well. I'm just gonna deliver a little dried fruit salad with a big cup of water, because this is all dry. I was gonna rehydrate, so there's a snack. And now I'm going to peel some apples. Uh, these are apples from my parents' farm. And I'm just going to wash them and then I'm going to peel them and then I'm going to slice them and put them in the dehydrator. So with these apple slices, um, or with the peels I should say, some of them I will turn into applesauce just to have tonight after dinner. Um, and some of it, the peels, I will leave behind outside. I have a secret little spot for our possum Steve <laughs> and his family to come and get the little apple shards. So that's what happens with my peels. But you can just compost them. Like a potato chip, perfect. So I've got a bowl here. I'm going to put the finished ones in the bowl with a little bit of cold water, just so that they don't get discolored. And then I'm gonna slice these apples. Don't worry, I'll use the... Will I use the guard for this? No, I'll just be really careful, but you should use the guard. So in a little while, these will start to shrink down. And when they shrink down, I'll add in the remaining stuff that's in the bowl down here. So that's that for that. Okay, it's been a little while. <clears throat> so the chips have shrunk a bit. I'm just gonna move these closer together so that I can fit in more from inside the bowl. I'm also gonna grind a little bit of nutmeg on top of them. And I have a little bit of cinnamon and sugar that I'm just gonna sprinkle on top because these are a treat, so it's okay if they're like, Hey guys, it's the next day now. Uh, the dehydrator, it looks like all the apple chips are done, so I'm gonna pop them into a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. Also, I'm feeling less good than I was yesterday. I thought I was like on the way out, and now I feel more sick today, so that sucks. I wanna see how thin they are now. And they're like crispy. They're not like a chip, but they're good. Also, I found another baby Oxalis outside. Look at this, look how small she is. It's just one corm had one leaf on it, but it's not like an outdoor clover, it's an Oxalis. It's just so little. So I gave it uh, a little pot and some soil and some water and now this will live in the kitchen so I don't forget about it because I'll look at it every day next to the big oxalis. Because <laughs> this is a dramatic plant so it will 
become limp, and that will remind me to water the other one. Hi. <laughs> How do you feel about being 35? Amazing. You look like a villain in a Bond movie. That's me. Wrong. <laughs> In our 30s. In our 30s. Bye! So now I am going to wash out the fabric that is still in the dye pot and I'm going to add one more piece of fabric to the dye pot. It's one of the ones that we pre-mordanted before, but I did some stitches through it. Uh, I just did like a running stitch and then I gathered down the fabric and I want to see if that's going to make a pretty, like if there will be, okay, so it'll dye it dark green, right? But then the spots where the stitches are, I'm hoping are going to be this sort of gray color. So that's what I'm aiming for. I think it's called shibori. But anyway, I'm going to pull out what's in the dye pot. We'll rinse that out. And then I'm going to put this in the dye pot and turn the heat back on. Isn't that pretty? It's like an olive army green brown. Ugh, it's so, I really love this color. It is really pretty. All right, I'm gonna hang these outside now to dry them. And then I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do. All right, <clears throat> it is a little later and I am going to go down into this garden bed and pull out the sweet potato plant. I figured I'd film because maybe there's a sweet potato in there. Got my shovel, let's do it. They're not very big or anything, but <clears throat> from one sweet potato slip, we got one dinner worth of potatoes. Still cool though. And they're purple, which is fun. Like even the inside flesh, look how dark it is. Not pretty. Anywho, so there's still about an hour left in my two hour timer. And the fabric is taking on a color, but it's not super dark. It's just kind of like, I think it's gonna be more of a tan green, like a lighter green. So I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little bit more iron mordant just to this water uh, to see if that's gonna do anything. Because science. That should do it. I'm gonna remake my iron mordant. I'm just gonna get rid of the nails in this because these ones aren't rusty anymore. So the nails that came out of the old mordant don't have any rust on them anymore because the uh, process of making the mordant dissolves the rust before the mordant process and then after. <laughs> cool. Now I'm gonna go put those back. Oh my God, oh my God, look it. I already know it was the right decision. Check this out. Where I poured the iron, look how dark. There's like these dark spots. Can you see them? Oh, that's awesome, it is working. How exciting. Wonderful. All right, the timer has just gone off for two hours. So let's check on this. It's bubbling a little bit. Let's see how it looks. Oh, it's very nice. I like it a lot. Cool. Well, I'm gonna turn the heat off. It's simmered, so that's good. Uh, it's a brownish color. And we'll wait for it to cool down and then we'll rinse it out. All right, it feels like that's cooled down. So let's rinse out what's left. No flesh. I feel like there's still an awful lot of color in here. I'm not really willing to give up this dye pot yet. I'm gonna have to see if we can find anything else to go in there. I'm gonna rinse this out now. Just gonna shake it outside for a sec to get the rest of the onion skins off. Look at that color. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? Look at the dark marks from the iron. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. So I'm just gonna rinse it till the water runs clear. And after that, I'm gonna hang it outside. All right, so here's the fabric that I t did a bunch of stitches through, and we're gonna see if it did anything. Ooh, it did do something. So it did work for a first time. I am happy with it. We got some nice white lines. We could do some really more complicated things with that in the future, I think. But for now, it's pretty cool. The colors are nice too. This one's a little darker. That 
one's a little lighter because this one went in earlier. Anyway, these are gonna go outside to dry now too. Okay, so it's a little later now and I'm just getting supper made. I have rice that is on the go. Now I'm gonna turn it down to low, put the lid on, hopefully that doesn't boil over. And I'm gonna take the sweet potatoes we just picked out of the garden and I'm gonna peel them and then we're gonna have sweet potatoes with dinner tonight. Oh, look how purple that is! That's cool. Cool. I'm gonna pan roast these. If it was a cooler day, I would have done it in the oven. So I made a little herb butter earlier uh, because I wanted something <laughs> for on a bagel. So this is basil and salt and a little bit of garlic and black pepper mixed in with some unsalted butter. And I'm gonna use that as my pan butter. And basically I'm gonna fry these in the pan on like a medium heat until they're kind of crispy around in all the sides. Um, and then I think I'll just start adding stuff. If I, I think I have a couple peppers left, so I'll put peppers, maybe some chickpeas. I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully it'll be tasty. It'll be tasty, it's gonna taste like garlic. Everything's tasty when it tastes like garlic. Pretty sure it's just tacos. <laughs> cool. So now I'm just gonna leave this on the stove. I think I'll add a little bit more liquid and I'm gonna leave it on low until Alex gets home. So what I put in this is sun-dried tomatoes, pickled eggplant, pickled hot peppers, chickpeas, fresh hot peppers, fresh shepherd peppers, purple sweet potatoes, salt, pepper, basil, garlic, oh, frozen corn, Black pepper, did I say black pepper? Oh, and taco seasoning, right. And taco seasoning. And bada bing, bada boom. Good morning, it's the next day now. I'm feeling like 10 times better than I have been for the last little while. And uh, we have a new project to do today. So I have a project we finished knitting on the live stream. Let me go get it. All right, ta-da, this is it. So I made this shawl. So this is all naturally dyed yarn. We made these different colors together over the last few months. This here is from, I believe Marigolds gave us that very bright yellow. And then this brownish, I wanna give it like a red argument, but brownish red is from Avocado Seeds and Skins. The bluish gray here is from Black Beans. And then this bright orange is from Onion Skins. So aren't those nice? Look at that orange, are you kidding me? How is that from a natural source? That yellow and orange don't make any sense. Aren't they amazing? This shawl is going to be like kind of an Outlander style shawl. It's long enough that if I go to a Renaissance fair again, it's long enough that I can tie it up in the back and it'll still like wrap around and keep me nice and warm. And it's got some awesome fun colors on it from the back, it just looks brown. So now uh, I need to block it. So I'm going to soak this in the sink with a little bit of hair conditioner and a little bit of laundry detergent, just, just a little bit of laundry detergent. That'll soften it down because I don't have any wool wash on me. The laundry detergent will help just to get any loose stuff that's not get fallen away. Uh, but first things first, we're gonna need water. So I am going to just fill the sink, maybe halfway full, uh, with warm water. This is the total amount of both. I used a tiny amount of our sensitive skin, unscented, gentle detergent, and then probably about a teaspoon of conditioner. Time to put this in. I should weave the ends in first though, shouldn't I? Yeah, one sec. Okay, ends are woven in. All right, I'm gonna let that soak in there probably for 20 minutes, half an hour. After that, I'll drain it out. I'll let it sit for another 20 minutes and then uh, we'll get to blocking. So see you in a little bit. Okay, so be nice. Don't judge my floors or anything. This just came out of the spin cycle on my washing machine and now it's time to block it. So I'm gonna put it on this mat. I'm hoping it'll be big enough to get the uh, scarf all the way stretched out. We shall see. So there it is, scarf, blocking. That vent is heat, so I'm gonna just push it right up against it so it dries fast. It's cool though, huh? 